Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Mighty Line Monday Minute. I'm going to cover some interesting topics this entire month, and that will be on the area of communications and safety. I hope that you will find this effective because over my many years, one of the important things to me was hearing things that meant something. So I'll be covering that in the next few minutes. First, a minute from our sponsor, and then I'll be back with AI Dave, and I'll close out with you directly. So stay tuned. The most efficient organizations use 5S methodology. Businesses run better when there's a place for everything and everything is in its place. Keep your workspace organized with 5S floor marking products from Mighty Line Tape. Mighty Line has a variety of floor marking products, including angles, tees, dots, arrows, footprints, letters, numbers, label protectors, and floor signs. Mighty Line Tape is durable and built to last. It's the best choice for industrial floor marking and the ultimate 5S solution. View our complete line of floor tape, floor signs, 5S floor markings, and other 5S floor tape products now at MightyLineTape.com. Let's just call it the art of pontificated messaging. I'll run through three safety earworms that I've lived with throughout my safety and risk management career. Ones that I have found to be clear, effective, and useful. So here they are. The first one is, If you can reach your hand over, under, around, or through the guard and into the point of operation, then it's not guarded. That phrase was hammered into me by my first safety supervisor, who, with many years of service with the state of Ohio, had seen it all. It was especially timely as I had recently graduated from college and found myself investigating the most severe of industrial accidents throughout northern Ohio. In addition to conducting site surveys and investigations, I was teaching mechanical and hydraulic press safeguarding classes at various employers. The measuring tool provided by Rockford Safety Systems was an essential visual and physical communication tool that demonstrated how so many guards were in fact not guards. In summary, if you are able to reach into an in-running powered role, a point of operation, or reach a pinch point, then the machinery or equipment is not guarded. The second phrase I heard was, the severity of an accident is a matter of chance. My supervisor would often remind me of this. His point was, of course, that no matter how minor the nature of the workplace injury or illness was that resulted from an accident, and even where no one was hurt, that it was merely a matter of chance that the accident or event didn't result in a more serious outcome. Don't we often think that way? For example, Boy, was he or she lucky, or that could have been a real tragedy, but thankfully it wasn't. In other words, that could also imply, let's move on. However, the phrase was fair warning to all that even the smallest of accidents and all near misses should be paid attention to, and that we must always strive to identify those hazards and risks that could lead to an injury or illness, so let's mitigate the risk before anything happens. The third directive was, be prepared for the unexpected. Fine words they are. This phrase always reminded me of my scouting days with the scout motto, be prepared. However, the reason I pack a blanket, warm clothing, sports drinks, and a kind bar into my four-wheeler every winter in Cleveland is actually due to my scouting years. That's because we experienced those frigid winter weather campouts in pup tents, and it did pay off once during a blizzard when I spent eight hours stuck on the Ohio Turnpike with a full tank of gas, warm clothing, sufficient water, and a jar of peanut butter. But was the Port of Baltimore really prepared for the very recent and unexpected tragedy involving the Dolly container ship that struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge? And should the event have been anticipated? The phrase, be prepared for the unexpected, was always of some concern to me as there was not a clear and direct call to action. For example, wouldn't plan for the unexpected be better stated, so that planning actually became an action item? And then there's the fuzziness associated with the term unexpected. What actually is unexpected that warrants action, and by whose determination? Perhaps a better command might be, risk assess, then take action, or risk assess, then mitigate. Or ideally, risk assess, then mitigate with the goal of achieving zero risk. Of course, pragmatically speaking, life certainly is not without all risk mitigated. So my final suggestion is, Risk assess, educate, communicate, and mitigate. 
The bottom line is that we must become far more knowledgeable about the hazards, the likelihood of occurrence, the range of possible outcomes, and the full scope of possible impacts, in other words, the risk. And to do that, we must have conducted those risk assessments thoroughly, diligently, and with purpose, always with the goal of taking action. Thanks, everyone, for listening in today to the Mighty Line Monday Minute. I'll look forward to talking to you in the weeks ahead more about effective safety communication. Please stay tuned, and as always, we'll have original intro and outro music for you as well. Take care. Have a safe day. Yeah.